All right, what's up, everybody? So I got Bert here, the product specialist over here in PropStream, Master Disaster, Killer Closure himself. Um, he's going to break down very simple as to how you can also run comps on PropStream. I know a lot of people do it differently. He's going to go super deep into it, um, and I will let him share screen, and we'll get right to it. What's up, Bert? Hey, what's going on, Stephen? Thanks for having me. And uh, yeah, no, let's clear up the fog a little bit on how to, you know, approach running comps on a property. Awesome. Okay, if you want to uh, pull it up and work your magic. There we go. So here's PropStream. Again, we have nationwide data. But uh, again, running comps, the, the concept of running comps is to um, find properties that recently sold at a market and then get uh, the data there. So uh, what, 1604, I think it was East Parish Street in Tampa. Yeah. There we go. So here's a property. It's distressed as you can see it. Uh, we're going to go into the details and every property has a details page, but to run comps, we're going to go into the comparables and nearby listings. So let me just explain what happens when you click on that area. The whole bottom half of the details page is going to just get changed. We're going to give you the comparables. These are the properties that sold in the last year, right? These are unfiltered results, by the way. And we're going to give you access to public and MLS records or both. And I'll explain what they are in just a second. But the nearby listings, we're going to give you neighboring records, right? The idea is you might be in a cul-de-sac, a country club. You can't use the comps outside of that area. So let's just take a look at the neighbors, right? Or you might be in the phase where the contract is locked up. Now you need a buyer in the area. So you're looking for buyers. Or you might be in the stage where the buyer bought the property. And the buyer says, hey, you know what? Find me another lead in the area. We'll do business again. So let's look at the other listings as well. So the most important one are really the, the top three to know what buyers are buying, to know, you know if any neighbors sold recently that are very similar. But the best one of the bunch is definitely comparables. So again, comparables are properties that sold recently. And we're going to give you access to public records, which are county records. MLS records, which are records sourced from the MLS board in that area, or we can put them side by side, right? So let, let's just break down the difference. The benefit of having public records is these are official, officially recorded records at the county, right? Every real estate transaction that happens, the county records it, and that's this area right here. So anything green is public records. Now, be careful with public records because as I mentioned, they record everything you're going to see cash transactions, foreclosure transactions, bank transactions, newly constructed property transactions, family transfers transactions. So you, you, you don't really want to run comps using bank transactions because you can see here the transaction is only $80,000 compared to the $200,000, $100,000 properties in those markets, right? So if you are using public records, best practice is to go to the sales situation and choose finance. Show me properties that are being financed by a bank, right? Now, if you're curious to know what buyers are willing to pay, go ahead and choose your cash buyers. And now we're going to show you all the cash bought transactions, right? So if you're writing comps, again, best practice is use finance. If you want to know what buyers are willing to pay, use cash buyer transactions. But once you choose the right record to use, in this case, finance for after repaired properties, I'm now gonna apply my characteristics. So this property is a three one. You're also gonna see the characteristics right over here. It's actually the top one of the bunch. So this is the subject property and those are the characteristics. So we need a three bedroom minimum, one bathroom minimum. And now I have my results. Now it doesn't end there. Again, you can apply year built. You can tighten up the square footage. This property square footage is 1,008. So here we can tighten up maybe 900 to 1100 and just get our smaller results that are the best representation of our, pro of our property, right? Finally, again, apples to apples. Not only do you wanna apply square footage and the type of records that you need, but again, apples to apples. If you're running comps on a mobile home, then you need to look for a residential and then go to property type and look for a mobile home. Now, in this case, we're dealing with the single family property. So we just need to check off single family. And the results that are left over are our single family properties that sold within a half mile radius around our subject property, which is the blue one right here. Now, it doesn't end there because what you need to do now is ask yourself questions. Why did that property sell for 241? Why did that one sell for 290? Right? Look at the square footage, look at the lot sizes. Most importantly, 
take a look at the photos. So click on these little photo icons and we're gonna send you to the photos of these properties that sold. Now, was this a property that was rehabbed and sold? And it looks like it was. Now, not only do we see why it sold for 241 or 290, but we now know the type of material it's gonna need for our buyers to get it at that price, right? And that's the luxury there. So once you're using public records and you've selected the records that you need and you've checked off the ones you want and don't want, the last and final step you're going to need to do is just hit save comps. That's going to tell you to save the property, which I recommend that you do. If you've gone this far to run comps on a property, you're one step closer to locking up that deal. So save that property into your my properties. But when you hit save comps, it locks in your filters as well. That way, if the homeowner says, call me back next week and you call back next week, when you go back into the details, those comps are still there waiting for you. But inevitably, what you do want to do is go to actions and hit view comps report. And we're going to take what you've selected for public records and put that on a PDF file for you. So we're going to take those property characteristics and those photos and lock them up on a little report for you. That way you can take it with you and talk upon it. So when you're with your homeowners and they're asking for some ridiculous prices and the property's falling apart or looks just like this right here in the photo, uh, these photos that you see, you know, it shows them the subject property, but as you scroll down, it's gonna give them what the range is in that market, what properties are actually selling for and what the average is, where those properties were when they sold, and then the sources that you've used, and then we're gonna include a summary of each comp and a photo of those comps, and the interior photos as well. Right, it's good again to use when negotiating with unrealistic homeowners that want full price, even though there's like mold growing everywhere or the property burned down. But this is also good for your buyers because now your buyers know not only the price of comps, but the interior work of that comp, right? What it's gonna take to get that property that they're gonna buy from you and the material it's gonna need to have in order to sell it for 240, 250 or the price points that we have here that you see, okay? So that's our public records. Now, again, the benefit there is that these are official county records. Now, what's been happening recently is that the county has been impacted by a pandemic. We had no control over. And what happens is that sometimes the county can be delayed a little bit. And that's why we give you MLS records. So MLS records is strictly MLS data. And the luxury with having MLS records is that you're gonna see properties that sold that are on the MLS that may not have been recorded at the county yet. But you're also able to see pending listings, right? These are properties that are one step from being sold. And most importantly, you can even see active listings as well. If you're curious to know if properties are going higher in value or lower in value, it's good to know what the active properties are looking like today, right? So that's the benefit of having MLS is that it's faster frequency. You're going to see things that sold here that the county hasn't recorded yet. You're going to see pending listings. You're going to see active listings to understand how the market is trending. Photos are also included as most MLS properties have photos. But another benefit is you might be in a non-disclosure state in like Texas or New Mexico where the public records doesn't give you the sell value. That's why we have MLS as well. So you're able to get the sell amount, get photos and find properties that sold that the county may not have recorded yet. That way you don't have to wait for the county's records. You can tap into the MLS and use the data to get that information. So for this example, we're gonna look at the MLS and we're gonna look at active, pending and sold. Now again, everybody's different, right? You can use just sold listings if you, know, you only wanna show properties that actually sold. Uh, for me, I'm going to use active pending and sold so I can paint a picture to my buyers, let them know, hey, these are what the properties uh, are valued at when they sold. And this is what the market is showing right now for active listings, especially if the listings that are active right now have gone up in value. I'm sure my buyers are going to want to know that, right? So that's the luxury of having MLS. It's not just sold, it's active pending and all the other statuses. But again, the filters are the same apply your bedrooms and bathrooms and year built and square footage. Go ahead and increase or decrease your distance. 
and then add your residential and property type as well. And finally, you'll get your results. And same with public records, don't just stop right there. Uh, go ahead and you know, ask yourself questions. Like here's one that stands out, it's a four bedroom. We don't need that, we're gonna unselect that. And that's gonna alter our average, right? But again, go through your results, definitely look at the photos, ask yourself, why did that sell for 226? And you'll be able to see the interior work of these properties, see what it takes to sell for 226. All right, you can see the material isn't all that lavish. And that's fine, 226 is not a bad price, especially, again, depending on how much you're able to lock it up. But once we have the selected results, all you have to do again, hit save comps. We're gonna lock in your MLS comps and your filters. So if you leave and come back, they'll be there waiting for you. But ultimately you're gonna to wanna to hit actions, view comps report. We're gonna take that MLS data that you selected and filtered out, and we're gonna put that on that same PDF file. So this one was all public records, which is, as you see here, all green. The one that's coming out right now will be all blue MLS records. Okay, so here it is. So same report, except now it's using MLS records, which gives you the low, high, and the average based on the on-market comps as well. So it's gonna take the MLS sold comps and give you the low, high, and average. And if there are any active comps, it's gonna give you the low, high, and average of the active comps. And then if there are any failed comps, it does the same thing there too, if you selected that. And then nice. where those MLS comps are, and then those MLS photos, and then the interior photos as well. And then hey, last but not least, both. Can you go back to um, when you go to cash comps? Because something I, I made the mistake is I was clicking on that tab at the top. I never realized there was a drop down. Yeah, I always clicked on that. But cash buyers will keep the same criteria. So you're still in the comparables. Correct. Right? Yeah, you're still in the comparables, cash buyers. Um, see, the difference with the cash buyer box here is that this is going to be, first off, unfiltered. And it's gonna show you every cash buyer within a one mile radius. And here's the challenge with that. Look at the sell dates, right? Some of them are from 2001. And some of them are obviously very, very, very recent. So not bad there. But the challenge is that um, the, the issue with these cash buyers is that these are gonna be owner occupied and non-owner occupied. So we're gonna have an issue here, right? So what you wanna do with this cash buyers list is A, apply a sell date range, right? Typically we like to go back a year. So we'll go back to like September 22nd, 2019. Again, I like to think of uh, finding buyers as like a matchmaker game. If you locked up a three bedroom, one and a half bath, and let's look for a three bedroom, one and a half bath buyer, right? Same with square footage. Again, property class, let's look for residential single family cash buyers. But the most important part uh, in this area is making sure it's non-owner occupied because you, you don't want to find a buyer who's buying a property and living in there, right? You want to make sure you're finding a property that's being bought and then it's non-owner occupied. So bought in cash and the buyer that bought it doesn't even live in that property. And this is where you're going to get your results right here, at least the best results. And if you click on one of those, it shows the transaction history if it's an LLC. Because the way I, I run my comps, is my, my max offer is always, you know, at least $10,000 less than what the LLC bought it for. But if we click on any of those. You can go into the details. We'll open a separate tab, just like you mentioned. And then you're going to see the uh, transaction history. So usually it's great to look at the transaction history. And like you said, yeah, you're going to see an LLC. There's also a cash sell tab. Shows you the seller's information, the buyer's information, and the buyer's mailing address. And what I also like is because we have nationwide MLS, you get to see the uh, MLS details as well, which shows you the agent's information, right? Because now you can see you know, the seller's agent, or perhaps this is a seller and a buyer's agent. So Glenn was the agent that represented both the seller and the buyer. So if you can't get a hold of the buyer, Let's get a hold of the agent and see if we can work a, a back doorway, right? So uh, that's again an effective method of finding buyers in that market. You could have also done the same with our comparables here. Uh, again, just what we would have probably had to do is increase our distance because we didn't have enough in a half a mile. So you could have done it in both areas. It's just the comparables. In order to do the cash buyers, you got to make sure you're you're choosing the cash buyers drop down. But again, typically in comparables. 
Uh, this is where you would get an ARV. So most people don't really look for the cash buyers in this area. They usually look for finance properties, properties that were rehab and sold. But again, as I mentioned, we have so much data and our filters are open for you to do it either in this box or over here in this box. It's really up to you. What's the difference between that drop down cash buyer selection and then the cash buyer button on that? So I think the big difference between these two is that the cash buyers lets you govern the owner occupancy. And that's to me very, very, very oh, yeah, important, that's, that's big. right? Because this one right here, we don't have that filter. So these cash buyer transactions, I don't know which ones of these are owner occupied or non owner occupied. And if it's an owner occupied property, that's probably not an investor. That's probably someone who bought a, a home they plan on living in or plan on rehabbing and living in for many, many, many years. So I think that's the huge difference is that if you're looking to know what non-owner occupied cash buyers are buying, go to this box and apply those filters. Got it. Wow. Um, you definitely opened my eyes to some new things. <laughs> that's great. Yeah, that's and, great. And, and I say this again, we have so much data. There's so much more that you can do. Like, look, let me blow your mind even more. Someone called in the other day and was like, hey, I want to run rental listings or run rental comps. You guys can do that, right? And I, I, I blew that man's mind. I said, no, we can do that. Here's how you do it. Take that zip code and then just go to the main search page. And we have MLS data. And remember, our MLS data consists of rental properties. So what you do is after you search a zip code, go into the filter and go into our MLS status and max out the listing amount. Remember, properties that are being rented don't have a listing price of more than 10,000. It's usually 10,000 or less. So here are the five properties that are currently on the MLS as rental properties. And we get to see their characteristics. A 3-3, three, three, a 3-2, three, a 2-1, a 2-2. Two, two. You know, so now we get to see what the theoretical rental prices are for a 3-2 in this zip code, a uh, 2-1 in this zip code, right? And now think about that. If you're in a much larger environment, like this is in Tampa, Florida, I believe. So now we have 92 currently rental properties listed. And again, you can add more filters. How many of the 92 are single families that are, you know, three bedroom and one bathroom. And so now it isolates the 22 rental properties that are three bedroom, one bathroom or more and what those rental prices are and where they're at on the map. So yeah, again, we have so much data. You could have gone to the details and ran the comps that way. You could have just searched the market and looked for rental listings. Heck, you could have searched the market and just say, hey, show me all the properties that sold in the last you know, eight months, nine months that are single family properties. I, there's just, again, so many ways to approach it. Uh, it. It's just a matter of if you're running comps, the best way to do it is through the property details. But if you're just curious, like I always am, and you just want to see records left and right, we have our search page for you to do that as well. Awesome. Good stuff, man. Um, that's, that's a really clear breakdown. I actually learned a few new things uh, when it comes to like categories and labels and stuff, but I think you broke it down very simple, man. I, I really appreciate you taking the time to uh, you know, just kind of show everybody this because it's going to be very valuable especially some people starting out. If you guys would like a um, seven day trial of prop stream, reach out to me. I'll send you a link and uh, we'll get you started. All right. Take care guys.